The show begins with Haru, a young woman in her late 20s who works as a pet groomer. Currently, she is seen in a bridal gown chasing her groom through a crowd before catching up to him. When Haru confronts him, she discovers that her groom has been actually deceiving her for over two years. In fact, he is revealed to be a married man with a child due next month. He then apologizes, stating that he never had the opportunity to confess his secret about himself, and hastily leaves. Haru, distraught and helpless to do anything else, simply tosses the bouquet at him out of frustration. A year later, Haru appears content yet cautious when it comes to love. On her way to work one day, she stops in her tracks to check her phone. She smiles gleefully as she views her likes on a dating site. Right then, a young man named Yu bumps into her with his guitar, causing her to drop her phone. As he frantically picks it up, he notices that Haru uses a dating app. So he wishes her luck in finding a special someone before walking away. Later that afternoon, Sugasaki, a regular customer at Haru's pet salon, notices her lost in thought and inquires about it. Haru then confides in her, expressing her disappointment that she seems to have no luck with men. Hearing this, Sukasaki reassures her and predicts that she will meet three men who are romantically interested in her. Later that day, another young man, Shintaro, shows up at the pet salon with his dog, and Haru greets them with a smile. After finishing up, the two are seen talking when Shintaro suddenly leans in closer to her, making Haru nervous. However, he only cleans the dog fluff from her face. But after that, he abruptly pulls out his phone and asks her if she can give him some information. This makes Haru excited and she pulls out her phone as well. But funnily enough, Shintaro simply asks for the salon's phone number to book another appointment. In the next scene, Haru goes to a bar with a close friend and co-worker, Asami. There, the latter reveals that all the girls gush over Yoshi, the bartender, because of his good look. Meanwhile, the first man she met on the street earlier, Yu, suddenly enters the same bar. Asami mentions that he is a singer of a band named Beyond Brooklyn and shows their music video. When Yu notices this, he thanks Asami for the support. He then turns to Haru and recognizes her, so he sarcastically asks her about the dating app results before walking away. A little while later, Asami warns Haru about the three Bs, which are bartenders, band members, and beauticians, the three occupations least likely to be faithful if you date them because of the nature of their job. Shortly after, Yoshi approaches Haru and tries to kiss her, but she pushes him away. She then returns home, only to discover that her apartment building has caught fire. So, Haru moves in with her grandmother, who introduces Haru to her tenants. To her shock, they are none other than Yu, the band singer, Shintaro, the beautician, and Yoshi, the bartender. Haru's surprise, or rather her distress, is escalated when her grandmother mentions that she's going on a trip with her boyfriend, leaving Haru as the house's landlady. Suddenly, she remembers Shigasaki's prophecy, but before she can delve into it, each of the three men bring in their girlfriends, leaving Haru puzzled. The following day, as Haru is unpacking her belongings, Shintaro comes up to her and offers to help. However, all he does is blurt out a few cheesy lines before leaving for work. Just then, Yu starts playing his guitar loudly, but when Haru confronts him about it, he simply dismisses her. She then returns to her room where Yoshi is waiting to help her. He tries to kiss her again as a thank you kiss in advance, but she stops him. Right then, Yoshi's date abruptly calls him from outside, and he walks away from her, leaving Haru baffled yet again. Back at work, she tells Sukasaki and Asami that she is now sharing the house with three men. Haru is torn between who she should listen to, as Sugasaki supports her, while Asami again warns her about the three Bs. Later that evening, on her way home, she buys some ice cream and puts it in the freezer. She then finds some bills nearby and learns that none of the three men have paid their rent since moving in. Angry, Haru begins her rent-collecting mission by approaching Yoshi and demanding the money. But as soon as he hears this, he makes up some excuse and leaves the room. Yu also does the same thing when she asks him for the rent. Moments later, Shintaro returns home, and he expresses his delight at hearing Haru greet him. He claims that her greeting gives him energy, but when Haru mentions the rent, he pretends to be sick and dizzy and runs away to his room. Eventually, Haru gives up and goes to the kitchen, only to discover that her ice cream has vanished. Instead, she finds a note on the fridge left by her grandmother, advising her to label her belongings to prevent others from eating it. Frustrated, Haru buys another ice cream, carefully writes her name on it, and then heads to the bathroom to take a shower. However, when she returns to the kitchen, the ice cream is yet again nowhere to be found. The next evening, determined not to let anyone else eat her ice cream, she carefully places pins on the floor for anyone who tries to steal it. Unfortunately, the plan backfires as the ice cream is still stolen, but when she moves towards the refrigerator, she steps on the pins herself. Haru then confronts all three of them about the theft, mentioning that she will forgive them if they admit to stealing her ice cream. 
When all three of them admit to stealing it, she reveals that she habitually eats ice cream after taking a bath. In addition, Haru goes on to say that the ice cream is a reward for her hard work at the groomers. Surprisingly, the same evening, she notices that all three of them have left her some ice cream with an apology note. Haru smiles as she reads them all, and it warms her heart. That night, she takes a relaxing bath and thoroughly enjoys her ice cream. To make the moment even more special, Shintaro approaches her and invites her out to eat. The next day, the two head to a ramen shop where they enjoy a delicious meal. But as they're about to leave, a mysterious woman is seen lingering nearby, watching them. Back at work, Asami cautions Haru to steer clear of hairdressers like Shintaro. She goes on to say that since hairdressers cannot afford to buy real mannequins to practice their cuts on, they constantly search for models and pick up girls from the streets. Sugasaki, on the other hand, encourages Haru, stating that she must take this chance and see what comes of it. That night, as Shintaro is doing Haru's hair, Yu sees them together and feels a little envious, yet he quietly walks away. The following day, Haru appears to be being stalked at work by the mysterious girl from the ramen shop, who also writes a threatening message, urging her to stay away from Shintaro. When she tells Yu about this, he explains that some of the girls Shintaro had approached for him to practice on may have misinterpreted his intentions. Strangely, the power goes out, and a knock is heard at the front door. Scared, Haru asks Yu to stay, and without hesitation, he obliges. After a while, the two eventually fall asleep next to each other. In the next scene, Yoshi returns home and is taken aback by what he sees. He angrily asks Yu if this time he used Haru to write a new song, but the latter firmly denies it. Soon after, Shintaro arrives home, and Haru confronts him, criticizing his seductive words and behaviors, which sometimes end up hurting people. This causes Shintaro to reflect on his previous actions, and he finally understands how his words might impact others around him. He then offers Haru and the other girl his sincere apologies, which they both accept. Later that day, Yu pays a visit to Haru at work and asks that she keep him company. However, just outside the salon, Yoshi is seen growing envious as he sees Yu take Haru by the hand and lead her somewhere. Yu then takes her up a hill to show her a stunning view of the sea, before giving her a ticket to his band's live gig. The next day at work, Asami, who learned that Haru was going to use concert, warns her that guys in bands tend to manipulate women for money. She also says that women who wear white shirts, skirts, and heels higher than 5 centimeters are said to be groupies, but Haru ignores this. However, when she arrives at the live venue, she does notice many women dressed as Asami had described. One of these women approaches Haru after the concert and boldly asserts that Haru is the next woman you will draw songwriting inspiration from. When Haru gets back home, she bluntly condemns you for dating women solely for the purpose of writing songs. She continues by saying that if he doesn't take women seriously, he will never be able to write a good song. When Yu hears this, he approaches Haru and asks her to be his woman, but the two just end up fighting. Yet, the two reconcile the following day after he plays her a new song. Later that evening, Yoshi is seen with a woman known as Sia, and when Haru glances through the door, she sees him leaning in close to her, possibly kissing her. For some reason, this makes her a bit envious. The next day, Yoshi invites Haru to the bar to try a brand new cocktail. Our cute protagonist happily says yes, but she also tells Asami about it. As expected, the latter opposes this and claims that bartenders are excellent listeners and women simply want to be heard, so they use this to their advantage. She continues by stating that bars are nothing more than bottomless pits where women lose money and their hearts. Soon after, Sugasaki reveals, much to Haru's surprise, that Yoshi is divorced. Asami then assumes with certainty that Yoshi's affairs are the reason for their divorce. Later that day, Haru returns home and sees Yoshi leaving the house with Sia once again. When he returns, Haru tells him that she will not be present at the bar to try his new cocktail, and suggests that he invite his girlfriend instead. When Yoshi hears this, he becomes puzzled, but Haru only criticizes him, saying that he's playing with Sia without due consideration of her feelings. The following day, while Haru is working, Sia shows up with her pet. As the two talk, surprisingly, it's revealed that Sia is Yoshi's sister. Moreover, she informs Haru that Yoshi's divorce was due to his wife having an affair with another man. Feeling bad for judging him earlier, she visits Yoshi at his bar and apologizes. As Haru prepares to leave, Yoshi again tries to kiss her, and she again stops him. Right at this moment, Shintaro just so happens to unintentionally see them kissing. The next morning, Haru wakes up with the flu in a fever, and Yoshi openly apologizes, blaming himself. Shintaro, furious after Haru leaves the room, asked Yoshi if he likes her based on what he saw the day before. Yu, on the other hand, has no idea what the two are talking about. 
Shintaro then declares in front of the other two that he likes Haru and asks for their support. Unfortunately, both of the guys are just left with feelings of envy. In the next scene, the boys try to look after Haru. Yoshi and Shintaro prepare meals and bring her medications. Yu, however, enters with laxatives and pain relief patches and asserts that they are better than any other medications. Afterwards, Yu tries to make Haru feel better by composing a melody for her. Yoshi takes the day off of work to care for Haru, and Shintaro does the same. Eventually, he confronts Yoshi about the kiss and then tells Yu about it. When the latter hears this, he provokes Yoshi aggressively, who is puzzled as to why he is so angry. Shintaro then implies that Yu likes Haru, but he strongly denies this. Later that evening, Asami reveals that the guys are truly concerned about her and asks Haru who she has feelings for, but her response is ambiguous. Asami claims that she is only pretending to be clueless. A few days later, a stage actor named Makoto, who resembles Haru's ex-boyfriend, offers her a flyer for a play. Our cute protagonist is perplexed, so she doesn't say a word. But when she keeps on staring at Makoto, he finally approaches her, and the two exchange numbers. Later, Haru tells Asami about the encounter, and the latter, as usual, warns her, claiming that stage actors are just as bad as the three Bs, and they also drink heavily. Then, when Haru admits that Makoto resembles her ex-boyfriend, she becomes fiercely opposed to her dating the guy. However, Haru disregards her advice and goes on a date with him anyway. Later that evening, Yu and Shintaro notice Haru looking happier when she gets home, but when they ask her about it, she doesn't reveal much. Meanwhile, Asami pays Yoshi a visit at the bar and tells him that Haru went on a date with a stage actor named Makoto, which makes Yoshi jealous. The next morning, once Yu and Shintaro learn about Haru's dating the stage actor, they try to convince her to stop seeing Makoto. They reason that stage actors don't have money and manipulate women by acting like they are sweet and charming. Yoshi also joins in on the conversation, asking Haru if Makoto is truly better than him, but she dismisses them and asserts that they're simply mistaken about Makoto. Later that evening, an assistant to the president of a record label called Universe Music approaches Beyond Brooklyn for a musical debut. Meanwhile, Makoto texts Taru that their play might be cancelled. He continues by saying that it's because they lack the funds to pay the venue fees and have no one to lend them the money. As soon as Haru reads the text, she rushes to meet Makoto. Later, when Yu and his band arrive at Universe Music, the assistant informs them that the label's president would like to hear their debut song the following day. So, Yu makes a commitment to his bandmates that he will complete the song he is currently writing for their debut. Elsewhere, Haru delivers an envelope filled with cash to Makoto. After reassuring her that he'll refund the money when the play is done, Makoto gives her a hug and makes a romantic proposal. Unfortunately, Yu, who is just passing by, notices them. The next morning, Yu tells Haru that his band's major debut might be decided that day, and she sends him her best wishes. Once she leaves, Yu reveals to the other boys that he saw Haru giving money to Makoto the night prior. Yoshi then adds that he saw Makoto drinking with his friends. Following this, Shintaro and Yoshi leave to learn more about Makoto, while Yu continues to work on his music. Meanwhile, Makoto stops responding to Haru's texts, causing her to become unsettled and concerned. In the next scene, Shintaro and Yoshi discover that Makoto bought drinks with the money rather than paying the venue fees. Yu, on the other hand, is split between going to the record label meeting and confronting Makoto, so he decides to tell the other housemates that he can't go with them. But as Shintaro, Yoshi, and Haru are arguing with Makoto, Yu suddenly appears and throws a powerful punch at Makoto in the face. Unfortunately, Yu's fight with Makoto causes him to miss the meeting, causing the band to break up. Later that evening, Shintaro and Yoshi both confess her feelings for Haru, but she doesn't reply. The following day, Haru makes an effort to ignore the two before rushing off to work. Afterwards, Shintaro informs Yoshi that he recently declared his love to Haru, and the latter confirms that he did the same. Yu, on the other hand, hasn't returned home since the band disbanded, which concerns Haru. So she goes to check on him, but when she arrives there, she finds his room in shambles. The guitar unattended, and the sheet music for the new song is shredded. Yu also doesn't respond to her tech. Later that night, Shintaro asserts his desire to protect Haru and asks Yoshi to stop if he's simply playing with her. However, Yoshi asserts that he truly cares about Haru and wants to protect her. The following day, Haru pays a visit to the studio where Yu's band, Beyond Brooklyn, is located. There, she meets Yu's bandmate and friend, Tatsuya, and tries to sort things out with him. Tatsuya angrily explains that Yu had agreed to finish the debut song and submit it to the president, but he disappeared and missed the meeting, which led to the band's split. Hearing all this, Haru tries to convince Tatsuya to forgive Yu, but he refuses and leaves with the band. Following this, Haru starts thinking of all the places Yu would go. 
Suddenly, she remembers his favorite spot on the hill and rushes there. Heartbreakingly, when she arrives there, she finds him with another woman, who deliberately tries to kiss you after seeing Haru. Despite the fact that he stops her, Haru assumes that they did, given the way the woman leans in. Later, Shintaro, who did well on his hairdressing test, offers to do Haru's hair. While he does this, he asks about the confession, but Haru rejects him, telling him that she just considers him a friend and not a potential romantic partner. Right then, Yoshi calls her to the bar and reveals that the owner has offered to let him run the place. He then embraces Haru after asking her to choose him among the three of them. But yet again, Yu arrives at that precise moment and immediately leaves, feeling uncomfortable. Without thinking twice, Haru goes after him. When she finally approaches Yu, he asks her if she's dating Yoshi, but Haru denies it. The following day, Shintaro meets Yu and admits that Haru turned him down, but that he doesn't regret it. Meanwhile, Haru stops by Yoshi's bar, where he invites her to the opening day. Elsewhere, Yu approaches his bandmates and expresses his regret before pleading for another chance. Tatsuya happily welcomes him back, revealing that it was Haru who changed his mind earlier. Next, Yu gives Haru a ticket to his live performance happening that evening and says that he will be waiting for her there. After he leaves, Yoshi enters the room and informs Haru that he will make a special drink for her that evening. Now, Haru is torn between attending Yu's live performance and Yoshi's opening event, and she chooses to go to the bar. However, she feels restless there as she is about to miss Yu's live performance. When she tells Yoshi that she is leaving, he asks her if she found the one with whom she can be herself with. Haru hesitantly tries to respond, but before she can speak a word, Yoshi understands and advises her to go see Yu before it's too late. Upon arriving at the live venue, Haru is surprised to discover that Yu has booked the entire place to sing just for her. Soon the performance begins and as Haru listens to the lyrics, she realizes how much Yu loves her. This makes her cry, despite her best efforts to hold back the tears. After the song ends, Yu finally asks her out, but although Haru likes him, she says that she wants to take her time to experience love from within. Haru then apologizes for her ambiguous response, but Yu assures her that he will always be there to sing for her until she is certain of her feeling. The next day, she accompanies Yu to the record label, only to discover that Tsugasaki is the president of Universe Music, and they end up signing Beyond Brooklyn to the record label. Finally, when Haru believes her time with the Three Bs is nearing an end, her grandmother calls to let her know that she will be extending her vacation for another three months.